this is so um this is my project on Frances Marion Bannon. So Frances Marion Bannon was a feminist activist, author, novelist, journalist, and teacher known for her anti-racism, anti-religious, and her courage as a pacifist. Who um, she was born in 1884 and died the year 1950 in Winnipeg and Manitoba. Um, so childhood. As the Canadian Encyclopedia states, Francis Marion Bain was the second youngest child born on the 26th of May of May in 1884, straight into a farming family of three girls and four boys. Francis's parents, Rebecca Bain and James Bain, were strict Methodists, which means that they were in an organization of, of, of historically related dominations of Protestant Christianity. Three of Rebecca's brothers were Methodist ministers, and she was involved in the Women's Temperance Union in the 1870s. Temperance Union. In the 1870s, the family moved to Streetsville, Ontario, where Francis was born in 1889. They moved to the West to seek a better life, living in Harding, Manitoba. Okay, um, so career. So what was Francis's career? Well, Francis was an author, but she also trained as a teacher briefly near Carmen, Manitoba. In 1908, she moved to Winnipeg not too long after ending her career where, to where her sister lived. She began to work in advertising with T. Eaton Company and was drawn to her older sister Lillian Circle. In 1912, Frances had become an editor and columnist for the Green Growers Guide. In her five years of working for the paper, she had worked on the Sunshine Guild and the Country Homemakers. The Country Homemakers was a page quite similar to Lillian's segment in the Weekly Free Press and the Prairie Farmer that combined a range of topics such as radicalism, feminism, and even recipes, as she wrote on December 25th, 1912. So um, so she wrote a book called A Letter Day, which I actually have right here. And um, A Letter Day was published in 1919. Though it is a novel and beautiful work of fiction, it's also autobiographical and contains scenarios and yeah, characters and scenarios um, similar to those in Francis's life. She's an outspoken, so for instance, the protagonist, Aletta, an outspoken opponent of the war, and when taking part in an anti-war demonstration, she is killed by a pro-war youth. During her decades during living in the United States of America, Francis had supported herself by working briefly as a trust company cl clerk under the name Ginty Bainham. In the 1920s, she moved to Manhattan Bohemian Greenwich Village and she became the editor of Siemens Church Institutes for the monthly publication, The Lookout. Then she moved back to Winnipeg in 1915, where she, 50, where she died the following year. So activism. As a member of the MPEL, which is the, so as a member of the MPEL, which is the, Manitoba Political Equality League. Bannon took part in the successful campaign for women's suffrage, the right to vote in political uh, elect election. Yeah, yeah, election. Um, sorry. So she took part in the women's suffrage alongside other high-profile members of the movement, including Nellie McClung and E. Cora Hine. Uh, she presented numerous petitions for women's suffrage to government and performed in the 1914 mock parliament at the Walker Theater in Winnipeg. When the liberal government of Tobias Norris came to power in 1915, he promised to introduce a bill of women's suffrage if presented with 17,000 signatures. After 40 case signatures were presented, the liberals introduced a suffrage bill to flood year. However, it did not include women's right to hold office. The Canadian women's suffrage. So, since we mentioned the women's suffrage movement, here's some insight on what it is, if you don't know what it is. So the women's suffrage movement happened, started in 1884 and lasted until 1917. And the cause of it was to fight for women to vote because in that time, um, they meant women were seen lesser to men because men were more in charge stuff. So. Yeah, so they're seeing lesser twin and indigenous and Asian women struggled most, or um, women of color uh, were, they struggled the most with when it came to just basic human rights and suffrage had represented hope for improvements in education, employment, healthcare, and to end violence against women. 
Um, and then I did this with my part with uh, my friend, but so the main reason I chose this topic was I did want to do a feminist in the first place, but when I, I but when I saw the last name, I thought she was related to a family member of mine. But after we did some more like research or whatever, we found out she wasn't. So that was a bummer, but it, we still did plan on doing a feminist. So we just chose her and after doing some research, we were quite interested. And my friend basically, it was the same reason. She thought, we thought that she was related to me, uh, to my family member and she wasn't. So we just continued to do the project, but yeah. Yeah. Right. Thank you very much, Marina. It looks like you've really done your research for this project. So I'm just going to ask you a few questions about, you know, your research and whatnot. That will be all right. Yeah. All right. Sure. And so uh, one of the questions that I'd like to ask you is, um, well, how radical was her feminism? And so does she also fight for um, women of color to have the vote, for instance, or... Yes. Was it? She did. Yeah, she did. Yeah. Okay. Huh. Uh, because you know, uh, uh, you did bring up about how it still be a long way until women of color have the rights to represent themselves there down the line. So uh, thank you for bringing that up. Now I ask what sources you used in order to create this project. Use Wikipedia, the um, Canadian Encyclopedia. There's something else. I forgot the name of it. Um, something, but. And we used uh, a lot, uh, quite a bit. Um, it was like the Manitoba history something. I don't remember the name uh, off the top of my head, but yeah. Yeah, and I noticed that you also brought up about how she was involved in uh, temperance movements. So those were uh, anti-alcohol, correct? Yes. Yeah, so um, I, I was just looking at an article here about uh, this person, and it says here that um, her parents embraced the idea of avoiding alcohol. So, uh, did um francis uh did uh, how did francis kind of embrace that throughout her life or was that like primarily influenced by her parents it was um influenced by her parents yeah mostly inspired by her parents yeah that checks so you know a lot of our uh, our parents often pass down our values to us and everything so yeah i guess that makes sense yeah, and another question in mind, may I ask how she became involved in journalism? So how exactly was she introduced to writing? Um, wait, involved in, or how did she introduce to, what? I didn't hear that part. Uh, yeah, how did she become involved in writing, like journalism? Oh, uh, I, she was very influenced by her older sister, and I think that's her older sister was into it she got into it as well because she, like well, yeah she was very influenced by her older sister Lillian for like the writing and stuff like that so yeah yeah that's very interesting um can I ask how she got her first um uh, can I ask about her writing process for writing uh, the Lee Today novel I actually don't think I know the process yeah so so you say it was kind of like semi-autobiographical so what oh, were some yeah. of the details that were like based off of your life? Like, okay, like, um, I think it was like the, her parents and stuff because like her parents and her dad not being like the nicest, but her mother caring more and stuff like that. Like, so, yeah. so did her, um, so did Frances's uh, mother kind of encourage her passion for journalism? Yes, yeah. Yeah, and how did her parents react to her uh, very feminist and radical? Yes. Her mother was, she was, she, she supported her, her. I don't know about her dad though, but I know that her mother did support her. Through yeah. and because with um, some historical figures, you know, you, you often find that their family might disagree with what they did. Well, but I'm glad that she at least got support from her mother. You know, it's nice to know that there's personal support as well. Yeah, so what would you say was the most difficult part of creating this project? I imagine that the research phase, you know, that's the trickiest bit for a lot of people. Probably, like, just trying to find enough information because we would go through multiple different articles and a lot of the stuff would basically just be the same. So we would have to, so we would do our best to find information that was different. It was a lot of, like, 
searching and stuff for it, but we did find it. We got quite a bit of information, so. Yeah, because, you know, eventually in high school, uh, they will ask you to uh, really cross-check all your information. They'll ask you to review countless articles. They'll even ask you sometimes to write descriptions of why you used each source. So we'll get triggered down the line. I'm glad you're, you know, already sort of growing into that mindset. Yeah, uh, and uh, what are her views on, uh, uh, so what are some of her other feminist views? Was it just uh, suffrage or were there some other causes that she supported? It, it was just suffrage, yeah, it was just suffrage. Oh, it was just suffrage, yeah. yeah. And because, um, you know, they brought up, uh, you brought up about how she was involved in uh, temperance movements, you know, anti-alcohol. Yeah, uh, if my memory serves me right, sometimes temperance movements are kind of linked towards uh, the idea that, you know, women were severely harmed by alcoholism in families. So I guess that was perhaps an influence in her feminist beliefs. Yeah, yeah perhaps, yeah. Yeah, and um, what are some of the uh, most fascinating things they found out about uh, Francis? Well, I have to think about that. Um, I did really like how she, like, was, what is it? Um, I like how she was, oh, I'm sorry, I have to think. Um, yeah, I like how she, or I found it very interesting that she was also a teacher, like, too, because, like, I, because I originally thought that she was just a like feminist and stuff like that and author but then when I found out that she was a teacher as well or like was briefly a teacher and taught children I found that very interesting and I also found it cool how she like went under a different name at one point um, while working at a clerk that was, I found that pretty interesting but yeah. I see. Yeah. And why do you think that's important that people uh, learn about Frances these days? So she was definitely very, even for her day, you know, she was kind of radical in supporting giving a woman of color the right to vote and everything. So why do you think it's uh, important for people to learn about it? And how would you like people to learn about it? I feel about like, her life? I feel like it's good for people to learn about it because like it shows like how much women have come or how much women have uh, gone through to get to where we are now or to get to where they are now. Because like, though we do have, like though we have gone, um, come a long way, we still have a uh, farther to go and there's a lot. So it's like nice like that people could learn about other people instead of like Ellen McClellan, uh, the main people like Ellen McClellan and stuff and how they like there's people who that were, could have been just known as those people who helped out that are having articles written about them and stuff. Yeah, and I think that's definitely important that we talk about Frances, especially since she endorsed giving women of color the right to vote during such a, you know, still racially discriminatory time and everything. Yeah, it'd be quite a while until uh, we reached the point that we are at today. Yeah, and you did mention about how you was a partner for this project. May I ask how you guys, uh, you know, kind of divide the roles, did the work? Yeah, we, um, I think we each day or each day we were writing about it, we did, I think we each did about like three chapters each. And there was one where she wrote it for me because I knew what to say, but I didn't, but I had to actually say it out loud and then because I couldn't like say it and then type it. So I was saying it and then she typed it for me and then I edited it and stuff, so. I see. Uh, down the line, of course, group projects need to think about ways to divide the work, set deadlines and everything. So I'm glad that you're already, um, you know, exploring that aspect. And one more thing. Uh, what, uh, what is a fun fact they have to share for us that, you, uh, that I haven't asked you about? Something like that. Something that I haven't already questioned you regarding. Well, that is that the um, protagonist in the book that she wrote is um actually isn't like a white woman she actually has darker skin than like yeah she's like not white she has darker skin and stuff and i find that quite interesting so it'd be an early step forward for more uh, racially diverse media as well then yeah so overall um i think we can all say that francis marion bayon was a very influential feminist who has shaped Canada into the country that it is today and has built a more diverse, equitable society. So thank you very much, Marina, for uh, 
sharing this very important uh, individual with us, her story, because it is important to acknowledge, um, you know, people like this, uh, people like her. Thank you very much. You did an excellent job. Okay.